um, Christian um, apologists, uh, some very conservative types, and uh, some other people on the other side. Uh, the the uh, debate was a resounding defeat for the conservatives, and as a result, uh, there's been a mass resignation from the national church in Finland. Um, I guess the latest count as of today, and this is just since Tuesday, about 18,000 people have resigned from the national church, and the last estimate that I've um, heard on that is that it's going to cost the church about 1.8 million euros per year. Yeah, so thank uh, you for your bigotry in driving yes. people away from your faith. Yes, and I, I, I predict that the church in Finland will, will evolve as a result of this to become more tolerant. Yeah, or die. Yeah. So. Yes. So, yeah, so see how fast evolution works. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's go ahead and uh, sure. move on with the, the talk. Uh, the, the reason I wanted to do this conspiracy theorist uh, topic is because <clears throat> we periodically get a flood of emails on a specific topic, and I guess it relates to how popular a specific clip is on YouTube at the time. But we've had a couple of people write to us uh, promoting their favorite conspiracy theory. So I want to like give you some examples of some stuff we get in email. Okay, so we had a guy write to us a few months ago and he has this theoretical model, um, a, a cosmological model that he claims is better than the Big Bang Theory. And he wanted us to review it. And so I asked him, hey, did you submit this for peer review from people that are like qualified to do it? And his response was, well, the scientific orthodoxy um, won't let him publish his ideas because they're just too threatening. So, and uh, another theme that we periodically get is on vaccines. Um, vaccines are a plot by Big Pharma that's designed to keep us from the knowledge that all we need to do to remain healthy and prevent disease is get sufficient vitamin D3 and maybe drink some colloidal silver. Um, never mind that it turns you blue. Um, oh, and colo colloidal silver is actually a good um, disinfectant. It actually does have antimicrobial properties, but only when applied topically. There's no evidence that it actually does that when you drink it. So please don't drink it. Um, and a big one is 9-11 was an inside job, and the proof is that the U.S. government has previously engaged in conspiracy theories, okay, plus zeitgeist. Okay. Christianity is a big conspiracy designed to keep everyone in line. The leaders of the major religions all know this, but they're sworn to secrecy. <laughs> and zeitgeist. <laughs> I see a theme. And HIV doesn't cause AIDS. HIV is actually a harmless virus. But Big Pharma and the CDC need you to believe that it causes AIDS. They use this to control certain segments of the population, for example, gays, and to generate big profits for Big Pharma and for genocide. And it's actually the antiretrovirals that cause AIDS. If you just exercise, take your vitamins, especially D3. Eat an organic vegan diet and reduce your stress, you won't die from AIDS. So these are some of the um, conspiracy theories that we get in email. And of course, they all want to chastise us for not thinking more critically because we're being just like the theists when we reject their theories. So that brings us to the question of why do people believe this crap? Well, it's basically a defense mechanism. Okay? Conspiracy theories help people resolve the cognitive dissonance that they feel when um, some facts challenge their belief systems. Okay? And when you add cognitive bias to that, that makes sure that any new information that would challenge uh, the theory either gets discounted um, or they, they overlook it. They, so people tend to discount information that, that disconfirms their beliefs, and they overinflate the importance of, of any information that tends to support their beliefs. And this is all born of a need to find some meaning in something that may otherwise be just an inexplicable event. Uh, people need to feel like um, they can identify a cause for something. You see this a lot with, for example, parents of autistic kids who Absolutely. want to point to 
you know, a cause, even though there, there might not be, a, you know, a definable answer that we can point to. And I, I just want to say with something like that, that's what makes me especially, you know, there's, I always sometimes will say there's a special place in the darkest part of my black atheist heart for certain people. And yeah. for people that would take advantage of somebody who is desperately vulnerable to find some solution to an ill person in their family, especially a yeah. child, I have no sympathy for that person whatsoever as far yeah. as like whoever would take advantage of that. There's just... You know, yeah, nothing and, you could impose on them that would be too merciless. Right, and and you know, uh, when you look at at what happens when people employ these kind of defense mechanisms, often they're feeling socially isolated, and particularly, um, you know, disempowered by whatever is going on, and so they're looking for some um, something that alleviates these feelings. Um, and what they find often with other conspiracy theorists is that they get this communal reinforcement. So they've got this community of other people that believe the same thing. And so this sort of is like a, a, a self-reinforcing thing. Um, and that kind of points back to the number of, of zeitgeist believers who contact us. Um, they're very enthusiastic about this and they eagerly solicit our approval of their beliefs. And, and can we just say one more time that that is debunked on the blog? Yes. So there's it no is. need to write to the list. You can go to the blog, look it up, yeah. see the opinions on it. It's been stated publicly. Yeah. So feel free to not email our list about Zeitgeist and go to the blog and and check the response. Yeah, we, we've not been subtle about our opinion of Zeitgeist. Um, however, it, it's interesting the number of very hostile responses we get from people who find out that we don't share their beliefs. Um, and again, there, there's this need to believe that there's some agency behind these events, whether it's 9-11 or, you know, my kid is autistic and I don't know why. And, and it's intelligent agency. Right. Like it you say, it's conspiracy. It's not, this yeah. isn't just, it's, it's some other virus causing this or that. It's that, I mean, it, it's like yes. there's this, this sort of, you know, conscious control yes. you're talking about. Yes, and it was, it's something that they are privy to that perhaps other people aren't. Um, and then it's actually um, re related to uh, pareidolia, which is uh, this tendency in humans to attribute, um, um, it, to see patterns where none exist, actually. And so it's the same thing that produces, you know, the, um, the Virgin Mary in a grilled cheese or, you know, Jesus in a dog's butt or something. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's one of the reasons people do it. It's basically a defense mechanism. So how do you avoid falling victim to a conspiracy theory or some other um, unscientific explanation for something? Um, it's basically um, Occam's razor. Does the alternative explanation that you're proposing explain more of the evidence than uh, the generally accepted theory or mainstream theory? Um, if it doesn't, then you know, you probably should reject that. Okay. Logic. Um, does the theory you're proposing depend on logical fallacies? And often what we see with some of these conspiracy theories is that um, it absolutely depends on logical fallacies. Uh, when confronted with evidence that the facts don't fit their theory, a lot of people resort to ad hominem attacks or you know, some other um, logical fallacy. Um, Next, is there a clear standard, it goes to methodology, is there a clear standard for what does and does not count as evidence in support of your theory? If you can't clearly articulate what does and doesn't support your theory, then it's probably not very valid. Um, an example of this was um, this whole repressed memory thing that was going on back in the 80s where um, it, if, you know, if you couldn't remember being sexually abused as a child, that meant you were sexually abused right. and you repressed it, you know, and, and they, there was this broad definition of what the symptoms were and odds are, you know, if you broaden the definition enough, then you're going to have some symptoms there. And that gets us into falsifiability. At some point, there, there's uh, so many things that, that could support the theory that it becomes unfalsifiable. Um, the magnitude of the conspiracy is another big one. If the, uh, the success of the conspiracy depends on huge numbers of people being in on it, um, it's, it's probably not going to be successful. And the other point 
to make here is that conspiracies are rarely successful. Um, even those that are at some point successful, people generally find out about it. So if there are no whistleblowers coming forward, if they never come forward, um, that's not an evidence that there's a conspiracy going on. Um, you, you actually have to have hardcore evidence that something is happening here. Um, and then, of course, you have to evaluate the expertise of those making a claim. So if someone's proposing an alternative explanation for something, look at their expertise. Um, if, if they are delving into some kind of scientific theory, claiming, for example, that evolution's a hoax and they've got some evidence to back it up, if their doctorate is in religious studies, then you can probably safely discount what they're saying because they don't have the relevant education and expertise to make that, you know, that claim. So just make sure if you don't have the um, education and expertise to properly evaluate the evidence, then you have to rely on experts to do it for you. So make sure you properly vet your experts before you accept their claims. Well, and also even somebody that has, um, I would say, that has valid credentials, you want to look at how does that align with other people who have the same credentials exactly. in the field. Like how are they looked at and viewed in their, in their relevant field. Exactly, because it is possible to have the relevant education and expertise and then be regarded as a complete crank by the others in your field. Or simply be at odds Yeah, with you know, consensus. Yeah. Which, and that doesn't make you wrong, but it does mean that if I'm not an expert, that's something I want to consider. Right. OK. okay. So um, that's pretty much what I wanted to hit on. That should be enough to poke a hornet's nest. <laughs> OK. Yeah, we'll get some letters, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. So we, should we go with calls? Let's go with some calls. We've right. got Caesar in Queens, Caesar New York. In Queens, New York. Okay, I'm putting that on hold. I don't know what's going on with yeah, the, with that line. Yeah, that's weird. Um, let's see, you want to go to John in Canyon Lake? Yeah, we'll give John a try. <laughs> that's sorry. on line four? Line four. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hi, John. Hi there. John, are you, you're on the air. Yes. Hello. Uh, Hey. Hi. Um, yeah, I, what I would like to say is, number one, you know, you were talking about conspiracy theories and the Big Bang, and it's, it's funny because here's science, and it's, uh, it pushes forward this uh, definition of the Big Bang, and yet um, science has also proven that sound doesn't carry in space in, in a vacuum. So really, I think it would more or less be called the Big Flash, wouldn't it? Well, the Big Bang wasn't the original name of the theory. That was actually proposed by, I guess, uh, was it a detractor? Yeah, it was. It, it was meant it was, to be. It was meant to be was, kind of like making fun oil. of it. Oil. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. part of a debate. It was meant to be making fun of it. So. Well, I just thought ironic that you know science's explanation, the name of it itself is kind of a catch twenty two scenario. But besides that, the reason why I called is because. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, atheism as a whole is kind of like a white elephant in the room. Um, you know, it seems that um, the movement is very small. Um, the groups that are out there, they don't seem to have much organization or money to advance their their deals, and 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 their deal is non-belief. You know, that's almost something not even to promote, but at the same time. It's dealing with the issues of the majority, majority, which is the religious Christian uh, population of our country, the United States. And um, basically, um, it's kind of difficult to accept being an atheist, first of all, because you have to take a step back from the general concept of reality, which is, uh, is there a guy in heaven who cares about us and is going to take care of us and, and look after our needs, and after we die, we go to 